Hello, Fiedelbogen here to my fellow workers in the vineyard worldwide. Greetings. Today you're watching Men's Rights Edmonton video log number four. So on September 24th, I made my first uh, video blog, and in it I said, and in it I called my opponents here in town fuckwits, and I said I'd like to see them post one piece of counter rhetoric criticizing anything at all about the content on either my website or on a voice for men. Uh, it's been one month and that challenge has gone completely unmet. Uh, but, you know, they did put up some posters last week. You want to take a look at those? This one says, when women are granted the same rights men have always had, that's not special treatment. It's equality. There's a couple things wrong with this. First off, there are no rights that men have always had. Uh, of all the serfs, slaves, and second-class citizens throughout history, plenty of them were men. There is no right that has always been granted to men just for being men. Second, women don't just have all the rights men do. In Canada, they have two more. They have the right to genital integrity and the right to legal paternal surrender. What I mean by genital integrity is that it's illegal to perform any kind of female circumcision on an infant. In 1997, Section 268 of the Criminal Code of Canada was changed to prohibit female genital mutilation. Now that's good, but the law, and therefore the right to genital integrity that it defends, extends exclusively to women. Genital integrity is a right enjoyed by Canadian women, but not Canadian men. Now, by legal paternal surrender, I mean a woman can give her child up for adoption and never have to pay another dime in child support. I don't have an opinion on abortion, but the fact is, women can get them if they want. That means that women have total legal control over whether or not they reproduce. I'm not saying women shouldn't have that right. I'm saying that they have it and men don't. The classic feminist response to this is that men have the choice to reproduce and that they can choose to not have sex. But what that ignores is that that is where a man's right to choose ends. Women also have the right to choose to not have sex. But if they do, and it results in an unwanted pregnancy, they have the right to abdicate any and all responsibility while maintaining the power to place an 18-year-long financial burden on another human being. So, my question to Feminist Edmonton, the Edmonton Men's Circle, and a voice for reasonable people, is this. If it's equality when women have the same rights as men, what is it when they have more?